and welcome to Winning on Wednesday. My name is Juan Vitas, and the purpose we're here for is simply get to get to know each other. I always say people do business with who they know, like, and trust. I'm the founder of Winning on Wednesday, and Winning on Wednesday is a platform that meets every Wednesday at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and we're really there to prioritize and building meaningful relationships and, and expanding your network. And uh, I, I have the pleasure today to introduce my friend, uh, Ray Schweppes. Hey, Ray, how are you? Juan, how are you? Thanks for very much for having me on the show. Excellent. And uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Yeah, I'm a native Long Islander, lived here all my life, uh, grew up here in Williston Park, um, went to St. Aidan's School, uh, Catholic school upbringing, and then uh, went to Mineola High School and went to NASA Community College and, uh, you know, uh, went then to NAS uh, New York Institute of Technology in Old Westbury. So, uh uh, pretty much been a Long Islander all my life. A uh, little brief stint in Brooklyn when I met my wife and then came back here. Oh, wow. So, uh, and, and uh, tell us, did you, when you were uh, little, did you have any uh, ideas what you wanted to become? Like any? Uh, uh, what yes. Type? Yeah. I either wanted to be uh, Jack Kirby or Steven Spielberg. <laughs> uh, though That's what I wanted to do. Uh, I was very much interested in art and drawing comic books uh, love science fiction, Star Wars. Uh, Spielberg was a huge influence on me, huge role model. Uh, loved his movies. Yep. And, uh, you know, so it was either going to be movies or comic books for me. Uh, something creative. <laughs> now, I'm going to put you on the spot. What is your yes. favorite? What's your, what are you? I'm not going to ask your favorite, but I'm going to ask you, what are you, what are some of your uh, more favorite uh, Steven Spielberg movies? Which ones are your top ones, would you say? Mm. So yeah, the top one would probably be Raise the Lost Ark. Okay. Um, but it, it's a tough one because yeah. uh I mean I love ET, I love Close Encounters. Yes. It does kind of switch around a little bit. And of course, George Lucas, anything Star Wars. Okay. <laughs> yes, we have to have those. And the, the, they're a great team too. It's George Lucas and Steven Spielberg, they're a great team. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, they they did great films and stuff. So that's that's great. Uh so tell us, um, what did you go to school for? So I went to school. Uh, originally, I went to NASA Community College because I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. I was a um, C student at best, and it wasn't necessarily because uh, I, I wasn't studious. I just didn't apply myself. I didn't I didn't find interest in school. Wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. And it's not like now where people identify these things and figure out trades and stuff. It, it was um, a little bit more difficult for someone like me to kind of find a path. And uh, I was originally thinking I wouldn't go to college, decided to go to NASA Community College just because I felt like it would be an inexpensive way for me to try out different things and figure out what it is that I like. So I literally took everything from accounting to zoology. It was a little bit of everything, figuring out what I liked. And it, oddly, I gravitated towards banking. I, I had gotten a part-time job. I'd already worked at a library, Shelter Rock Library at Herrick's. And I loved that job because my boss... He let me pretty much get away with murder. I got to, uh, he, he recognized that I like drawing. So I got to draw comic strips like the Sunday funnies for Shelter Rock Library uh, folks, for a few folks and, uh, you know, kind of making fun of things. And uh, so I got away with murder. And this was kind of um, my first real job was at Roosevelt Savings Bank in New Hyde Park. I became a teller. I gravitated towards that. I liked it. I liked talking to people. I liked seeing different people and learning about different businesses. So Right away, those seeds were kind of planted. And then at NASA Community College, I took a banking course and I thought, you know, I, I kind of like this. And at that time, Roosevelt offered me a full-time position and said, uh, you know, that they'd like me to come aboard as a teller supervisor. And I wasn't sure about that because I knew I had to kind of figure out for college what I wanted to do. And they said, well, we'll pay for your classes 100% if you get all A's. And it was 75% if you get B's. It was, uh, you know, and so on, uh, a little wow. less. and. You know, if you got D, you know, you didn't you didn't get paid. So I suddenly went from a C student to being A plus. Yeah, that would that would motivate me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Motivated me hugely. Um, and then I went to New York Institute of Technology. Uh, I'd love to say that I chose the college for the right reasons, but I really didn't. I chose it because I was chasing a girl there. And um, yes. but 
it wound up being a great move for me. It was a very good school, just like NASA Community College. Um, I'm very passionate about NASA Community College because they offer affordable education for folks here on Long Island. Yes. And it's a great way to get those courses without paying through the nose and being in debt forever. Yep. Um, but I'm also very passionate about New York Institute of Technology. They didn't have the coursework that I wanted to take and uh, what I needed to learn to do the job that I was looking to do, which was uh, to get into like financial advice and that sort of thing. So I met with the dean there and he helped me create a curriculum because I had asked him, I said, is there anything we could do? So he, I got to create my own curriculum. And that taught me that you always ask the question because the worst thing that could happen is somebody saying no. In this case, they said yes, and I wound up being on the dean's list with a curriculum that I created. And having that experience was um, definitely transformative for me. It let me know that, hey, you know, I'm kind of in charge of my destiny here. I got to I got to do things this way. So it was pretty cool. Wow. Wow. That's that's crazy. That's amazing. Uh, now, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, w this point where um, tell us a little bit about, about the uh, Jovia right now, because it's I know that mm -hmm. uh, we had mentioned before that um, it used to be uh nephew and i have been a yes. member of nephew for many many years and now that 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 can you tell us a little bit about that sure yeah um well i came over to nephew at the time because uh nephew was a credit union my wife was an educator so that's how i learned about nephew and we did our banking there because you know we saved a lot in fees we had uh, great service and nonprofit banking means basically that any fees that are generated any profits go back to the membership so i knew was very beneficial for me to do banking there versus anywhere else. Um, so I was, uh, at the time, I was a Chase guy. WAMU had just failed. This was, you know, 2008, uh, financial crisis hit. And, um, you know, it, it was very tough to do anything for, for businesses. Uh, and that's what I gravitated towards, was working with businesses because they were very different. Every day was meeting different people who do different things. I would learn a lot. I loved it. I covered Suffolk County. Uh, I got to run around. It was like my playground. Um, and I did a lot of good work. Um, when, it, when it became Chase, I was structured into a branch, and that really wasn't something that interested me. So um, I went to NFQ. I was doing my banking. I said to the guys at the desk, listen, I'd love the opportunity to work with you guys. You're hiring. And they said, yes. And I said, great. It's a shame you don't do business work because that's what I like to do. They said, well, actually, we do. And we're, it's not quite working out, you know. So, well, can I speak to somebody? I have my resume here. And I wound up meeting with the CEO and a couple of folks in the executive level. And they hired me the next day to run business banking for, for NFQ. Uh, that was 15 years ago. So uh, I've, it's been quite a journey. Um, going from NASA educators to Jovia was something that was also a journey. Um, because, you know, we did a lot of great work with educators on Long Island. We were doing great work in the community. But a lot of folks, the NFQ name wasn't really resonating. And we had to compete with... You know, Teachers Federal Credit Union, Beth Page, other credit unions, other banks. So, um, you know, as much as we get along, we're still competition. And uh, for us to continue expanding, uh, if I'm in Manhattan and I'm talking about nephew, they're going, what is that? They don't know what that is. Um, and I'm explaining it's NASA Educators Federal Credit Union. Well, right away, I lost them because the branding doesn't resonate with folks uh, who outside of NASA Educators. So what would we do when we go into community? Well, we have to come up with something that's an inclusive name, something that, you know, it, it expresses what we want to do. So we had decided that we wanted to be an innovative credit union, and we decided that we wanted to be uh, a joyful experience for our members. Uh, we wanted to delight our members. Uh, we wanted them to bank on the bright side. So right. the name Jovia just kind of said joy. It didn't mean anything. It was something we could put the meaning into. And the colors, we wanted colors that were kind of bright and bold. So that was how we kind of came up with that name and decided to go in that direction because we felt would reflect how we wanted to be innovative and how we want to bring joy to our members. Okay, got it. That, that makes sense. Wow. And, and I love it. And I and listen, I'm very happy with Jovia. I'm, I'm, I'm a you know, member and uh, I, I love it. And you know what it is interesting is the people that uh, the, the people that make the bank, you know, the, the, the credit union. So it's really the people. That that, uh, that made me stay. Believe it or not, you <laughs> before going to anybody else, and it's it's the customer service, and and so you don't see see that in other uh, financial institutions, you know. So it's really uh, it's great that you guys are doing a great job with that. 
Um, well, I'm grateful, grateful to serve you. I'm grateful to serve the members of WOW and the members of the community. Absolutely. Thank you for being so support, so supportive of the community. Um, at this point, I, I like to give the uh, this I would say, like to say the golden mo moment time or the golden nugget. Uh, if there's any uh, piece of information you'd like to leave behind or uh, share with other people to become better business persons, uh, do you have any examples or suggestions? Sure, sure, absolutely. Uh, a couple. So one is you know the the two year two ears and one mouth. You know, listen as you're speaking to someone because uh, you know that's that's why we have two ears and one mouth. Uh, I would say that when it comes to networking, um, I love the opportunity when I walk into a, a room and I see a couple of folks who are standing around and don't seem to know anybody. I love the opportunity to walk up to them and say, hi, who I am, introduce myself, try to get them you know, to talk. And you never know who you're talking to. You never know who you're going to meet. I also love that opportunity then to introduce them to folks that I know. And uh, Juan, you and I do this, I think, all the time. You, you play host, whether it's your event or not. You're you're welcoming folks, and so, I think that that goes a long way, you know, because yes. it, it, it's helping people. Uh, the the last thing I would say is, when I'm involved in sales, because I've been involved in sales all my life, we're we're all salespeople in one way or another, and the way that I do sales is not by going out and saying, "Hey, listen, you want to buy a checking account?" I don't go to a networking group and hand my card to everybody. Okay. You're not a used car salesman, in other words. Yeah, yeah, that's not not my gig. And hey, look, I'm not going to knock it because it works very well for some folks. Yes, yeah, some folks right. are very good at that. It doesn't work for me. I just right. don't work that way. So, um, you know, for me, the way to do sales is you get involved in the community that you're looking to work with. Yeah, yeah. And and you you do things like you get involved in planning committees for nonprofits. You work on boards. You get involved in the schools. And by doing that you're making an impact. Uh, and by making an impact, you're working with other like-minded individuals and professionals who they are accountants, attorneys, business advisors, and they, what do they do? They know, they like, like and, and they, they trust, trust you. Exactly, exactly. And, and same it's... here, you know, I know and I like and I trust them. And then you work together. Right. And it's that consistency of, of meeting with them, a consistent basis and a frequency. And it's, it's it's almost like a branding, right? You're branding yourself for being that person. Of, sure. Hey, he's such a nice guy. You know, he has that. He's such a nice guy. And, and everybody knows oh. you as a nice guy, by the way, Ray. Everybody knows, <laughs> Ray. Everybody I talk to, because you branded yourself, you know, such a way. You're a nice guy. And if you go, that goes a long way. And that's value. You know, that when people want to do business, you're selling value. So to your point, we're always selling ourselves, but we're selling ourselves in different forms. You see what I'm saying? So you're absolutely you know, be, be becoming a, a brand for yourself, you know, brand for being that nice guy or or, or being the, uh, you know, the guy that always cares and gives. So it's you always want to work with those type of individuals. Absolutely. But um, uh, so do you belong to any other networking groups besides WOW? Or the other other groups that you belong to, or do you know, do the other networking? Speaking of networking, sure, yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, uh, Wow, certainly. Yeah, I love being a Wow member. Um, Jovia loves being uh, a corporate member. Yes, um, thank you, thank you for your support. Yeah. Oh no, our our pleasure. We we love the interactions, uh, you know, virtually and in person uh, with your group. Uh, everyone's been fantastic and very welcoming to us, and I hope yep. we are the same. Um, yeah, I would. For me, networking is uh, all about the organizations that I work with. So uh, NASA Community College, I'm on their foundation board, so I'm very involved with them. Uh, we're looking to form Business Leaders Council with folks who would come and meet at NASA Community College. Um, I also uh, work with Leukemia Lymphoma Society, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Networking through them is very important to me because it fulfills a personal goal as well as a professional goal. Um, and then other groups on Long Island, um, you know, there's there's plenty of uh, other professional groups, such as the Attorney Accountants Networking Group, uh, HIALI, uh, the Long Island Association. We have a, a wealth of groups uh, on Long Island. And, you know, each one of them, I think there there's ones that do things. Um, there's Each one does something very specific. Uh, you know, uh, the reason I like WOW is just because you're dealing with a great cross section of uh, an inclusive business community. And uh, you want to do a great job uh, okay. leading that effort. So uh, thank, thank you very you. much for that well, opportunity. Thank you.
Thank you. And uh, we, we try to give everybody a chance. And that's the whole thing is being inclusive. And, uh, you know, everybody talks about diversity, but it's about actually doing and not talking, you know, and mm -hmm. we like to we like to do the action and we like to show. I always say we have the proof of sample. We like to show people the world that what we're doing is what we're saying and back and what we say, because there's a lot of you know people out there that talk a good game, so to speak, but they don't back. Sure. Them their claims and you know yeah, and and, and, in the, and networking that that does happen that you see over time yeah and there, there are a couple of other groups i do want to mention uh, very specifically and i know one of them is a partner of yours uh phil andrews in the long oh, island yeah. african-american chamber of absolutely. commerce absolutely uh, they do a great job uh we love working with them and their members and also the nasa council of chambers uh, because for our branches that's one of the ways we're out in the community we can help it and I don't know if a lot of people know this, but I used to actually serve on the council. I used to be on the board of, of uh, directors of the uh, the, the National Council of Chambers, which is one of the organizations I'm always supportive. Uh, in fact, we work with other chambers of commerce. We're in talks with other chambers of commerce because it's all about networking. You know, it's all about getting mm -hmm. col and collaborating. That's the other thing that a lot of people don't realize. Is yes. Collaborating is key because sometimes by doing it yourself is you can only do so much, but working together, you can create and achieve more by working together and 100%. Uh, so i always say collaborative is always another way and a lot of people don't realize that hey even when they're starting out of a business they may not have the funds or money for marketing or anything like that but they have the time to collaborate to your point join a organization volunteer that is showing value you know so you you brought up great points before about doing that and a lot of people don't do that they want instant gratification they don't want to work for it you know and it does take time you, you, i remember somebody told me you have to do your time and it's true you have to do your time in other words because by doing your time means that you're showing value to other people and, uh, and it's, it's, it's being in front of them. And it's, uh, it's always that out of sight, out of mind. So the more frequently you meet somebody, and that's the beauty about WOW is that we meet on a weekly basis for the four, last four years. We've been meeting every, every, every week. So uh, wow. tell, tell us about, th thank you for sharing that. And tell us about your, um, about the Le Leukemia Lymphoma Society. Tell us about that, like the night, can you, we go into that and tell us about your journey about this? Because this is really interesting. Your story is remarkable, by the way. Oh, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. And I, I appreciate your support as always with that. Uh, so um, for, for those who don't know, uh, I'm a cancer survivor. I had, uh, and I, I, always forget the technical name for the myothia or whatever that I had, but it was a tumor along my jawline, uh, head and neck cancer. And um, at the time that I, I realized that I had this, it was a year following uh, the death of my uh, niece, um, uh, Isabella. She had oh. passed away from an uh, inoperable brain tumor at the age of eight. Oh, and wow. um, it, I mean, the most awful thing that you could imagine oh, happening to to a child. Oh, and uh, so when I was diagnosed, originally, I was told it wasn't anything to worry about. It was probably just a fatty tissue thing. But I didn't like it. Uh, it concerned me. And I went to Memorial Sloan and I spoke with her surgeon, uh, Bella's surgeon, uh, the one who worked with her. Um, he was world renowned as an expert in this uh, in head and neck cancer. And he took a look at me and he said, I don't like it. He said, you know, I know they told you it's nothing to worry about because I don't really like it. It shouldn't be there. I advise getting it out. So I did. And then when they did the biopsy of the tumor that turned out it was cancerous, it was stage two. I needed radiation. My journey, what I went through personally was, you know, getting the radiation, living in New Jersey for six weeks because that was where they had the treatment that I needed and being alone and going through that and having the discomfort, the pain, um, loneliness, knowing that, you know, I, there's a potential that I couldn't make it through and seeing kids go through that treatment, the same treatments that I was getting, you know, my face was getting red. Um, I don't want to get into too much detail because it's, you know, it's uncomfortable. It's gross. It's, um, you know, I was ashamed of it and, uh, and it hurt and kids are going through this painful treatment. I'm, I'm almost 50 years old. To me, that was unacceptable. And Leukemia Lymphoma Society, I was aware of because of their Man of the Year, which is now their Visionaries event. I had been there. I'd been so impressed by the organization. And I learned about the work that they were doing with their children's initiatives uh, for uh, you know, looking for cures and looking for better treatments for kids. And that's why I gravitated towards them. And, and since that, I, it's been my four, four years there, I think. And um, I've been an executive challenger, which means that I personally fundraise for Leukemia Lymphoma's Light the Night event, uh, which is this October 21st. Uh, it's every October in 
Generally, it's in Eisenhower Park. It is again this year. 4,000 people show up and they hold up lanterns representing survivors, uh, folks going through treatment, um, you know, people who support. And it's just an amazing sight to behold. It's, it's, and this supports their Dare to Dream initiative, which is a children's initiative that they're devoting $175 million to changing the way kids are treated. And they had, during COVID, they had uh, treatments that were being um, um, tested where other organizations couldn't do that work. They continued that work. Um, and so they're making big changes and putting their money where their mouth is. So I'm, I'm very much devoted to that organization to end uh, cancer, blood cancer for kids. And, um, you know, coming up with treatments that are not as severe because even kids who go through it and make it out okay, you know, they have severe side effects and, um, you know, so lifelong side effects. So, you know, um, putting them through the adult treatments is wrong. Um, I mean, it's what we have, so it's what we're doing because we're trying to do the best we can, uh, but we need to make a change with that and, and we will. So light the night is a beautiful event. Like I said, 4,000 people come, um, they hold up those lanterns. It's a great fundraiser because, you know, people walk as teams. Jovia has a corporate team. I'm very excited. Our community involvement committee is very much involved there. And I'm sharing the executive challenges this year. So, you know, if there are executives out there who are interested or people who want to sponsor or people want to just come and walk or even find my personal link and just, um, and donate to the cause, um, whatever they want to do, however they want to get involved, it is so much appreciated. Uh, and I would be eternally grateful. Uh, I'm also holding a fundraiser personally, October 16th at the six harbors, uh, brewery in Huntington going to be a fun event, you know, raffles, 50, 50, uh, baskets, oh, wow. Uh, and and every drink that they do, uh, every drink that somebody orders, a dollar goes back to LLS. Oh, that's great! That's amazing! Great! You you wow! Uh, the fact that you, I mean, you're a survivor and that you're doing all this stuff for as a, for the kids and everything. This is amazing! And and uh, wow! And and I can't wait to be there and it's actually experience that because uh, to your point, I would like to see how beautiful it would see to see all these you know uh, uh, lanterns go up. It's at night. I've never seen that. I've never seen that done before. Oh, and it's and, amazing! And families are there. They love it. I mean, it, yeah. there's so many nice activities. It's a very uplifting uh, and engaging event. Uh, my kids still wow. talk about it every year. So definitely, folks, it's a it's a once in a lifetime experience. October twenty first at Eisenhower Park, light up the night. I think this is something that anybody should, everybody should be participating. And listen, and and if you do, you know, do for the kids. I mean, me as a father, to, it, it pays me to hear about the stories about these kids and and the fact that we if you can able to do anything, even just show up to support. You know, it doesn't have to be yeah. monetary, but just show up just to support, just to bring awareness and let people know that this is going on. And and I think with awareness and and people could bring more uh, funding for that and all that stuff because like people need to know. You need to know about yeah. these things. So, wow. Well, thank you so much, Ray, for sharing your story. And um, if uh, listeners out there, what's the best way to uh, contact you? If they want to get in contact you, what's the best way to contact you? Sure. Best way to contact me is cell phone. It's uh, 516-289-2409 uh, or R Schwetz, R-S-C-H-W-E-T-Z at jovia.org um yeah that's those are the best ways to get a hold of me okay excellent thank you ray thank you so much for sharing your story with us and uh, if you'd like to become a member of winning on wednesday simply go to our website www.winningonwednesday.com and sign up as a first-time guest and uh, we'll see you next time thank you so much and thank you everybody thank you ray thanks Mark.